you think of soil as a living, breathing thing, when you've got billions of living creatures operating in even just a small amount of soil, the idea of soil health and how important that can be for your crops is really evident. When you read almost any farm magazine anymore, almost the number one thing that I see in there is soil health. Well, what does that mean exactly? What are we after? You know, in a lot of cases, I can just look at a regular soil test and I can tell you if your soil is healthy or not. Now, certainly there are a number of other tests that you can run, specific soil health tests, but what we're really after are just a few basic things and we want to go through those with you today. Let's go back to Agronomy 101. We want to have 50% dirt, 25% water, and 25% air in our soil. Well, if we don't have air and we've got living organisms in the soil, that's one of the first things I think about when I look at soil health. So how do we have more oxygen in our soil? Now some will say, well, if we do tillage, we're pushing oxygen into the soil, and that's true. You are getting some oxygen into the soil. The problem is to do it, you had to disrupt all the homes of the little microbes. So actually reducing tillage is one of the things that we find helping the health of our soil. The other thing is getting excess water out of the way. Yeah, so that's where right away we're taking a look at drainage. If you don't have good drainage, if you don't have tile in the field and you're having high water table issues, that's a big, big problem. You've got to get that drainage improved. But in addition to that, I also look at calcium levels. Let's say you have low calcium levels. Let's say your calcium levels are 40%, 50% in a base saturation test. That's insufficient. You need at least 65 to 80% calcium in that soil. What more calcium does for you is gives you more porosity. Calcium is a big particle, okay? So if it's big and we have a lot of those big objects in the soil, well then that leaves more pore space for air to get even deeper into that soil and provide more oxygen for living creatures even deeper into that ground. Another thing that provides a home for these living creatures is building up our organic matter in the soil. You could do that in a number of ways. We talk about it often on Ag PhD that it starts by reducing tillage, uh, it starts by putting things like manure out there and compost out there as fertilizer sources, raising crops with lots of roots. Uh, there are a number of things that you can control to actually make a difference during your farming career, building up organic matter levels significantly. All right, in addition to that, the biggest thing that is important for you is raising a good crop because the more crop you have above ground, the more roots you're gonna have below ground, the more everything just gets going in that soil. So I, I look at that kind of two ways. Number one, in terms of raising the best crop possible, you've got to look at everything there is to that. So that's fertility, picking the right varieties, having good weed control, insect control, disease control, all those things are super important. But then the other side of it is, if you have growing season left, and there's nothing growing on your ground, your soil is going to get less healthy. So that's where cover crops kind of come into play in a lot of cases. Now, I look at our farm, we plant corn when the ground's still frozen or the frost is just coming out. And a lot of times we're harvesting or finishing harvesting when the ground is frozen again. So I have no time to raise a cover crop in that case. But in a lot of areas of the country, and even on our own farm, if I have wheat, for example, that comes off several months before freeze up, put a cover crop out there. That's the best way to keep that soil health going and improving all through the season. We certainly hear a lot about soil health and how important it is to improve it. We agree with that. We believe that soil health is really a key to getting high yields and maintaining them for a long time. So look at soil health measurements for your soil and, and do some of the practices that we talked about today to build up your soil's organic matter, get the right nutrient balance within the soil, and get that right balance of water and oxygen by improving your drainage as needed. Hey, one last thing that I should mention here too is soil pH. If you don't have adequate soil pH, let's say you've got really low pH or really high pH, that's also a detriment to the living things in your soil. So yeah, there are just a lot of basic soil concepts we talk about, it's the same stuff every day. I don't care if we're talking about raising a good crop or raising a healthy soil, it's drainage, it's fertility, it's all those other things. Well, we want positive things growing out in our field, not weeds like our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop this weed later in the show.